It is chaos outside the IPN building. Both Novacat and Combine officials have repeatedly asked the populace to stay calm, but with the entire Ghost Bear galaxy surrounding the city, most people here are assuming the worst. I've made many attempts to contact Novacat officials to speak. To say that Clan Novacat has had a rough past century would be an understatement. Following their defeat in the Comstar Trials on Tukiad, the Novacats found themselves continually betting on the wrong horse. First with the Draconis Combine against the Smoke Jaguars, then the Second Star League. Even when on the sign that ostensibly won, the Novacats left bloodied and continued to struggle to find a toehold in the galaxy. Booted out of the clan homeworlds for their actions during the Great Refusal, the Novacats made a deal with the Devil that was the Draconis Combine for control of the Iris Prefecture near Clan Ghostbear in exchange for defending the Combine from invasion. In 3062, that invasion would arrive thanks to the Ghost Bears, who ended up decimating priceless Novacat naval assets and further weakening the much beleaguered clan. Though a stalemate was eventually reached, the fighting had been intensely personal and brutal, leaving both the Novacats and Ghost Bears bitter. The word of Blake, kerfuffle, gave the Novacats pause, as there was some understanding that always being the first to leap into new conflicts and ventures had not worked out well for the clan in the past. Though they would eventually answer the call to fight the word of Blake, it would once again be costly in terms of manpower and resources. During the Second Dominion War, the Bears hammered the Iris Prefecture, and in all but name, it became a war of eradication against the Novacats. Though they fought bravely and tenaciously, the fury of the Bear Tumen left the Novacats all but completely obliterated. Though the clan would linger on, the confidence that the Draconis Combine had in the clan was gone, and instead of a partnership, the Combine treated the Novacats like a liability that could be blamed for the losses incurred during the war. The Second Combine Dominion War would end in November of 3101, but that wouldn't be the end of the suffering for Clan Novacat. With a shattered Tumen that would offer very little to the Combine, and made the scapegoat for the entire conflict thanks to Combine propaganda, the Novacats had precious little ground to stand on heading into the 32nd century. Attempts were made to start rebuilding, but after an incident where a protest by Combine citizens resulted in Novacats firing on protesters, the Combine acted to start isolating and further degrading the influence of the clan. New policies from the Coordinator demanded that the Novacats move away from existing population centers in locations that could be guarded by ISF troops to prevent conflict. These new cultural preservation districts were advertised as ways to keep everyone safe and to reduce conflict. However, in practice, they were glorified concentration camps. Though the Novacats lingered on for a few more decades, they would never again be a political or military force that would demand respect. Of course, that didn't mean there weren't attempts to rebuild. Today's Battlemech, the Cave Lion, represents one of the paths taken to try to re-establish the clan's Tumen. First stocking off the assembly lines on Aris and New Barcella, the 75-ton Cave Lion was intended to inspire Novacat warriors and strike fear in their opponents. This completely new design was a political statement as much as it was a battle mech. After all, a defeated and irrelevant clan couldn't devote resources to such a bold industrial effort. In reality, the Novacats couldn't do it alone. With the partnership with the Combine in tatters, they were not a reliable and trustworthy partner. Instead, the Novacats sought to build closer relations with Clan Seafox by partnering on the project. Constructed from a Sinha endosteel frame around a Starfire 375XL fusion engine, immediately it's obvious that the cave line was not an inexpensive venture. Its 12 tons of reflective armor and collection of expensive clan tech weapons would only compound that expense. Since it's been a while since we saw a mech wielding it, each point of reflective armor can absorb two points of energy weapon damage. Single point leftover damage is discarded, but a single source of damage will always destroy at least one point of armor. Also, any heat generating effects from flamers or plasma weaponry are halved down to a minimum of one heat. The drawback of reflective armor is that its brittle nature when hit with blunt force including falls, physical attacks, or moving through walls and structures 
where any damage incurred is actually doubled. Additionally, any hits with armor-piercing rounds receive a plus two on their armor-piercing effects rolls. If an entire section of armor is destroyed in an attack where the damage was doubled, any damage created by that doubling does not transfer over to the internal section of the mech. For example, an armor-piercing AC-10 round hit against a section of reflective armor with 15 points of protection left on it would take the 15 points worth of damage due to the doubling of the round's impact. But the leftover 5 points of damage would not be transferred to the internal section. Now where were we? Ah yes, the cave line. With no jump jets, the cave line had to rely upon its top speed of 86 km per hour, an Angel ECM suite, and a rather terrifying collection of weapons to get through the workday. The Novacat Khan, Jokali Nostra, was insistent that the mech's loadout be mainly energy weapons in order to reduce the strain on the logistics lines during a campaign. The mech's two primary weapons were ER particle projection cannons mounted in the left and right torsos, which provided a consistent 1-2 punch of 15 damage. An advanced tactical missile 3 system mounted in the center torso could help at long range, depending upon how the warrior filled those two tons of space devoted to ammunition. The previously mentioned Angel ECM suite was nestled in that right torso. In the mid and short range, four medium pulse lasers provided a rather horrifying amount of accurate damage for anyone who wanders too close to the cave line. Finally, for up-close conflict resolution, the mech was given clawed projections from the hands, earning it the Battle Fist's design quirk. Cave Lion's 17 double heat sinks kept the mech heat neutral while on the run and firing those ER PPCs and the ATM-3 launcher. However, bringing in those medium pulse lasers will require some heat management. My typical route would be to hold off on one of the ER PPCs when the MPLs are in range, and that would allow firing all four of the pulse lasers, the ATM, and one ER PPC and still only end up at plus one heat for the turn. You could do that for four consecutive turns before laying off on one of the pulse lasers to reset back to zero heat. That's not too shabby. Overall, it's this frog's opinion that the Cave Lion is an excellent example of clan technology in action, with just enough new technology to keep things interesting when used in Dark Age and Neil Clan era games. It seems my appraisal was shared by the warriors of Clan Novacat, and many quickly adopted the battle mech as a favorite. It is interesting to point out that the Advanced Tactical Missile 3 launcher was a compromise with Clan Sea Fox, who insisted it be added as a showcase for the technology. Apparently, the Foxes were also behind the use of reflective armor instead of the tried and true Ferrofarus armor plating. The Iris Alpha Factory operated at breakneck speed to produce as many cave lions as possible to support the reconstruction of the Novacat Tumen. The Sea Foxes took their cut as compensation for their contributions to the partnership and put the mech up for sale. In the following years, the cave lion would be spotted among wealthy mercenary units, the splintered spirit cats, and among Novacats which had joined with the Republic of the Sphere. In 3137, Clan Novacat would once again bet on the wrong horse when they took in Emmy Carita following a faked self-deletion. It would embroil the Novacats in the intricate and dangerous internal politics of the Durkanus Combine and ultimately lead to the clan's destruction. Following the Battle of Iris in 3142, almost all of Clan Novacat's Tumen would be obliterated in a nuclear blast. Warriors of Clan Novacat, I, Taisa Diablo Reed of the First Ginyosha, have a message from you from Yori Kurita, the glorious coordinator of the Draconis Combine. She bids me to tell you that this was your last chance, that all your lives have been expended. Too many times have you abandoned your duty to the Combine. Too many times have we faced the consequences of your actions. No more. Today your clan, like the Smoke Jaguars and so many others before you, dies. There will be no surrender taken, no absolution offered. This is the end of you. In a reminder that the Great Houses are no strangers to horrific and amoral behavior, the surviving Novacat civilians were rounded up by the Combine forces and sterilized so that the clan would never return to its former glory. Though not killed outright, these people were scattered deliberately across the Combine planets as laborers and slaves. Following the destruction of Clan Novacat, the Cave Lion was rendered an extremely rare sight. Clan Sea Fox now controls the Specs, and the ability to produce the mech, though it is uncertain if it will. 
It's quite possible that if it does see future production, we'll see a cosmetic update to distance the mech from its history with the Novacats. There are no official variants of the Cave Lion, but I'm still going to take my best shot at creating a totally non-canon mech frog variant. For ease of description and modification of production lines, I changed nothing about the loadout other than the weapons. This should keep the technicians relatively happy. With the goal of building a mech more in line with the original desires of Khan Jakali Nostra, it's going to be an almost entirely energy-based loadout. The Angel ECM suite and four medium pulse lasers are all in their original locations, however, I swapped the ERPPCs for a pair of large pulse lasers. It doesn't move any criticals around, and they offer a shorter range but more precise shot for the discerning mech warrior. The ATM-3 launcher was pulled out in favor of three AP Gauss rifles fed by one ton of ammunition. One placed into the right arm, two into the left arm. Finally, a pair of emotional support ER small lasers are split between the left and right arms. While the Cave Lion MF has much less to offer at great distances, the accuracy and nasty close-range anti-infantry and battle armor component can make the mech a ferocious brawler. Heat is not an issue with the 17 double heat sinks as you can fire both large pulse lasers and three of the four medium pulse lasers without going into the red. It can get warm once you bring the ER small lasers into play, but hopefully by that point you're already close to finishing off your prey. While the future of Clan Novacat is in doubt, be it official or in spirit cat form, I hope the cave lion persists. Either on the market through the Sea Foxes, or perhaps picked up by the Rasselhog Dominion, as they would probably enjoy having yet another animal themed totem mech in the Tumen. The Cave Lion is a solid clan heavy mech, and it can go toe to toe against its peers at the 75 ton point. If you've never heard of it before today, I would recommend the Cave Lion as a great example of a mech that can help people dip their toes into the water with reflective armor. Everything else on the mech is straightforward and manageable. It's good to have these sort of mechs for those who might be set upon their ways and reluctant to leave certain earlier points in the timeline. Not gonna name names. If the mech has any drawbacks, they're found in the design quirks, as the cave line is both distracting and difficult to maintain. If you're playing a one-shot battle though, the maintenance one won't matter. If you have used the cave line before, how did it go? I'd love to hear your stories in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for sticking around for all this Battletech nonsense. If you think the video was worthy, hitting that like and subscribe button lets YouTube know that it's worth sharing with others. For those who take the extra step to become channel members, you are fundamental for keeping this all going. Thank you. Until we meet again, take care, and please go out and make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.